Thanks for joining us back right here on Dogma Debate. I'm your host, David Smalley. I just finished up a segment on uh, supporting believers and their right to belief. And uh, if you missed that video, go back to YouTube and check that out. And if you uh, w- would like to hear the episode in its entirety, go to dogmadebate.com. All of the radio shows and podcasts are available. Next up, I want to talk briefly about school prayer. Um, back in the 60s, Madeline Murray O'Hare was, was basically just the most hated woman in America for um, stopping the forced prayer of kids in in schools now at first blush especially in our society in our country that sounds like a horrible thing you know we we kind of have this this connotation with prayer that that prayer is is very positive is very good and um, you know why would you ever want to stop a child from doing such a thing well as I said in the last segment um, we don't necessarily want to stop children from praying. Um, if, if you choose to raise your child in a household and they believe and teach them to believe that things are watching them, creatures are watching them, that demons and angels are out there battling, it, it, it's kind of a scary world out there for kids. But um, if you choose to make that part of your, your household teachings, again, that's your right. That's your constitutional right. Um, but your home is paid for by you and your church is paid for by you. And I have never seen, nor have I heard about an atheist, um, protesting inside your church, telling you to stop praying or protesting inside your home, telling you to stop praying because the things that you manage and the buildings that you own and the buildings that you support financially with your dollars alone is private property and you can do in there whatever you like as long as you're not hurting anyone or keeping people captive you can do whatever you like um, it's when you take this um, personal belief the personal practice of of um, your your religion and thrusting it onto the mainstream and going into a situation like a school And basically telling kids, okay, kids, you're going to pray this prayer, uh, and it's going to be led by the teachers. Okay, well, here's your first problem. What if the teacher's Catholic and your child is Baptist? What if during the prayer, the, the, the teacher decides to say, you know, we want to thank God for the school and for the principal and for these fantastic books and for this wonderful charity that's been helping us out. Great. But then they also start to publicly pray for your child and your child's parents, you, to see the light. We pray that Becky's mother and father will come around to the Catholic Church um, and be able to see the truth in the Catholic Church and will stop sinning as a bunch of Baptists. Oh, that would be inappropriate, you say. That is where we draw the line. That we wouldn't allow. So we want to allow prayer in schools, but we don't really want the teachers to do the praying? Well, let me tell you, there's nothing stopping your child from being at the table at the library, reading the book, and stopping to read the book to say a private prayer. I don't think anyone would would come up and say anything to that child. It's the organized stopping time for education for time for a religion that is happening in a public building that's funded by Christians and Muslims and Hindus and atheists and agnostics and every other type of human being you could possibly imagine. That's the problem. It's the location. If you sent your child to church and they stopped down for 20 minutes to talk about how to install a carburetor in a 92 Mustang, 
but you might not raise your hand and say, um, what does that have to do with church? Is I didn't send my child to mechanic school. If I wanted my child to learn about carburetors, I would make that the focus. That's not the focus. I sent him to church to learn about church. It's the same concept. We send our children to public locations where they focus on multiple general applicable facts and and means of finding information to further that person's education, to learn math, science, basic reading. We're not sending them to church. So uh, a couple of things. For one, it's you never know what the teacher's going to be uh, thinking or how the teacher's going to lead that prayer and how that, ooh, what if that teacher was Muslim? We just said we allowed prayer. We never said how. Suddenly there's a carpet and the Mecca and the bending and the what the hell is going on here? You would freak out. You would lose your mind if your child came home telling you that that um, that their that their teacher led them in an Islamic prayer. I didn't even write that one down. It just came to me. I swear. I promise. Whatever. What what would you do about that? Well, that's kind of the same mentality non-believers have. When we hear that our child was praying in school with a Christian, and in your mind you're thinking, oh, well, that's different. It's a Christian prayer. Mm, No. No, it's not. It's not different. It's different because it's you. The reality is um, prayer is for your own personal places, your own quiet time, and I believe even in the Bible it states it's actually even better to go, you know, Pray in the privacy of your closet. Um, doing it publicly is kind of just showing off. So forcing prayer into a public environment where the tax dollars are funded for other reasons, it's just a misuse of resources to begin with. Secondly, it's going to start a, a, a whole new pile of problems when that teacher doesn't agree with your beliefs, especially if it was something as contrasting as Islam. Or say the teacher was Jewish and your child was doing this and the rocking and the humming, you would lose your mind. You would, you would lose your mind and you know it. So we really don't, even though we say, yeah, we support public uh, uh, prayer in schools, you support a specific type of Christian prayer in schools. And I'll bet you, um, if I could just grab two random listeners or two random Uh, people watching this video right now who support prayer in schools, I bet you two don't even agree with each other on exactly what prayer should be said and which one should be left out. And that's kind of the point. We We don't bring things into the public sector that are so divided. We don't take a captive audience such as children, which the law mandates that they are in this building for a certain many uh, a certain amount of hours per day. You don't take a, a captive audience that is trapped, that is that is too young to make decisions, and allow uh, educational leaders to direct their spiritual path. We have spiritual leaders for that, and that's why the religions are decided by parents. Beliefs or lack thereof is decided in the home, not school. Before I end this segment and ultimately end this show, I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, yeah, but if we don't pray in school, if we don't teach religion in school, aren't we effectively teaching atheism? Ooh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, That's kind of the point. Atheism is not something to be taught. It is the lack of teaching beliefs. It's the lack of having a belief in a religion. It's not anything to be taught. Atheism is not equal to science. Atheism is not equal to a cult or religion. There are no rituals. No, it's not the same as teaching atheism. It's the same as separating 
public education from from private spiritual learning. Go have the church. Go have the prayer. Go have the Sunday school. But do it in a private building, not in public schools. I'd love to hear more from you. Go to dogmadebate.com. I'll look forward to hearing from you. I'm your host, David Smalley, and for now, all I've got to say is go buy the book, Baptized Atheist. It's available on Amazon.com, and it's also available at Barnes & Noble. I'll see you next time. Yo, boys, I am singing song. Soup song. Flop song.